Hey web designers, 2024 is right around the corner and you should be asking yourself this question. Have I done a good job at selling websites and building my business as a web designer? Whether you've done that or not, you might wanna stay tuned for this video because today I'm gonna to share two very different but equally awesome methods of selling websites, building your business, and bringing in some income as a professional web designer. So stay tuned because we're gonna talk about the pros and cons and the methods and steps for each one of these approaches to selling websites. We all know that being a web designer is about more than just designing the websites. You have to be able to acquire the clients and sell the websites so that you can continue to make a living. So we're gonna outline these two different approaches. These are two different business strategies for you as a freelance web designer, starting with approach number one. Approach number one is what we would call high-end custom work or a high ticket offering. Here's the steps that go into a high ticket offering. Number one, you're probably gonna do some market research. That means you wanna understand your target market, their needs, and the level of customization that they actually are seeking. So you're gonna figure out who is my client, what do they want, you're gonna figure all of that out. And as soon as you have a good idea of what type of client you're looking for to offer these high-end websites, and when I say high-end website, it could be 10,000, it could be 15,000, it could be 20,000, it could be 50,000, but these are definitely high-end clients that have a higher-end budget and are looking for really custom, hands-on solutions. Once you have identified that type of client that you can do work for, next is to move into client acquisition. Step two client acquisition is really you networking, using social media, and attending industry events to find these potential clients. And as you do that, you need to make sure that you have the correct messaging about your offering. How do you actually position yourself? How do you bring value to these clients? Why should they spend 20, 30, 40, 50 grand on you? That is gonna be the hard part, you identifying that messaging. Pro tip, if you are gonna sell expensive websites, you need to look expensive. You need to sound expensive. Your portfolio needs to seem expensive. So everything about that experience has to match the expectations of the client. Once you've done that, you move into step number three. Step number three is to actually have a hands-on consultation to provide them with a real portfolio. You're gonna meet with the clients to understand their needs, and then you wanna present a custom tailored proposal. Now this is very, very big and different from our second approach that we'll talk about. This is a quality approach that you are doing here. And so everything needs to be white glove. It needs to be custom. It needs to be directed specifically at them. And to do so, you're going to have to learn how to ask a lot of really good questions. You're going to have to be a diagnostic technician. You're going to have to ask deeper questions because these types of high-end clients don't care how the website looks. What they really care about is that it makes the money increases revenue, increases leads or traffic. That's what this type of client cares about. Once you have delivered this custom tailored proposal, it's time to move on to the design and development phase. This is the portion that you love. Step four is all about you creating a unique and customized website from scratch or at using some sort of advanced framework. But again, everything here is customized. They should not be able to go anywhere else and find anything like what you're doing for them. It's all custom done. It's all inventing the wheel specifically for this client because they need that type of wheel. And so this is a longer process. You're talking about longer lead times, higher budgets, and longer project times. And again, if you're thinking about doing this type of high ticket offering or high end work, you should be charging in that 10, 15, 20, 25 range. And you should be asking yourself, how many of these do I need to hit my financial goals this year? If you're selling websites for 25 grand and your goal is to hit six figures this year, then you only need to do four of these projects or have four of these clients to hit your financial goals. If you're selling them for 50, then you only need to do two. That means you have six months of project or lead time for each of those. So ask yourself the question, how much do you wanna work? How many projects should you take on? And what are your financial goals? Once you've done that, it's time to actually deliver the website and move on to step five. This is called the review and the revision process. This is where you present the site to the client, you receive all of that feedback, and you make the necessary revisions to the site. There's gonna be a lot of time. You're gonna have to really put into the proposal time for back and forth 
multiple iterations and revisions so that the client is getting exactly what they want. If you're talking to high-end clients, think about somebody who's trying to buy a very, very expensive vehicle. They don't want just any run-of-the-mill vehicle. They want it built exactly to their specifications. The right type of interior, the right type of leather, the right color car, the right wheels. They want it to be the exact way that they envisioned it. And so quite often, high-ticket, high-end work has baked in revisions and iterations and there's no way around it. You should expect it because they expect it. That's part of that high-end process and that white glove hands-on feel of custom high-end work. The sixth step is to launch the website and hand this website over to your client. Once it's approved, you launch the site, you transfer all the necessary files, and you hand off all control to the client. You put the keys in the hands of the client. They drive that website off the lot. They own it. They maintain it. It's a one-time payment. We are all done. And if you want to, you can continue to do some sort of follow on support. But when it comes to high-end clients, they don't want to lease it. They don't want to rent it. They don't want to have some sort of subscription going on with you. They want to own that website outright and you're gonna to have to sell it to them as such. So make sure that you price your website services and the product accordingly. So again, you can hit your business and financial goals for the year. Lastly, every high-end website client I've ever worked with requires some sort of post-launch support. That means you're gonna provide a period of support for any issues or additional training, additional updates that are needed, bug fixes, or anything that happens in that following 30, 60, 90 days, whatever it is that you would like to establish as that post-launch support. Again, that's part of that money-back guarantee, part of that ongoing high-end, high-ticket, white glove support. Make sure that you are offering them all the support they need to feel like they have spent their money wisely and they've made a good purchase with you. Let's talk about some of the pros and cons of these high-end offerings or high-ticket websites. Number one, you're gonna have higher profit margins. Custom work typically commands higher prices. This means that you are charging twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars for the website, and you're doing that in one, two, maybe three months worth of time. That is going to pay off for you. You're going to have better margins at the end of the day. Again, that doesn't mean that this website costs that much to make. It just means that that's the value that it provides as a product or service, and you are the one that was able to offer it. So the margins can be quite good when you're doing these high-end offerings. Number two, a lot of times you can offer more unique websites or more unique designs. You can offer those unique tailored experiences and really stand out. This can be great for your portfolio, for that creative spark or desire that you have in you to always be working on things that are new, interesting, and challenging. And the last pro of this type of work is the relationships that you build. It's working closely with clients, being hands-on with them, and leading them to repeat business potentially and referral business where they scream your praises from the rooftops because you've done such high-end quality work for them. That's a good thing. Build those relationships. It's going to build your business and your portfolio. Now let's talk about some of the cons, some of the downsides to this high-end custom work. And the first one being that it's very, very time consuming. Custom work requires more time and effort and energy. Working with these types of clients requires more back and forth, more communication, more meetings, more revisions. And so design, development, revisions, all of that stuff starts stacking up and really eating into your schedule. So you have to be prepared to offer that much time. The next con to this is that this type of work with this type of price tag really requires high levels of skill. It requires a broad and deep skill set to meet a lot of various custom needs. One of the things you could do to counteract this con or this negative is to niche down maybe and specialize in a certain industry that will help you to get better faster at any particular thing. And the last con on the list is that you're going to have a less predictable workflow and a less predictable client acquisition method. That means you can work on these project based clients, but they're going to be less consistent. It's going to be harder to find them and you're going to find yourself potentially in a lot more of that feast or famine dynamic and it's going to cause potentially higher stress and higher stakes. So keep all of those pros and cons in mind before you pick approach number one. And with all that said, let's move on to approach number two. Approach number two is not about quality like the first one was, but it's all about 
quantity. This is about doing as much work as you possibly can and doing mass amounts of work. And this is gonna be your low ticket offering or what some people might call the templated projects approach. Here's a step-by-step -step guide of this templated approach. Step number one, you need to create a selection of templates. That means choose or design a range of templates that can cater to different industries. Now again, it might be wise of you to niche down on one specific industry, maybe coffee shops, maybe plumbers, maybe electricians or people in the trades. You're gonna create a series of templates that will allow you to tweak and customize them later on. This way you can spin up websites and projects quickly, just do a couple of changes, insert all their information, their images, their copy, and then launch these things within a couple of days or maybe a week. Much shorter timelines, much faster turnaround and delivery times because you've created this range of templates to work with. Step number two is to make the customization process really, really efficient. And so like I said, you have this range of templates. Now you're gonna develop a quick and efficient process for tweaking those templates to meet the client's needs. You might be using things like AI image generation or chat GPT for copy. Maybe you're using a no code tool like Wix Studio where you can reuse sections across multiple client projects and just tweak and change them. But you're gonna wanna create a standard operating procedure for how you do this customization. That way it's like dropping this project at the start of the conveyor belt and it moves through the stations, all the stops of your process until it kicks out quickly and efficiently on the other side. Step number three is all about marketing and sales strategy. You need to use digital marketing, social media to reach a broader audience and emphasize quick turnaround and affordability. You're not looking for high-end clients who are trying to drive Mercedes off the lot. You're looking for people who are just trying to lease a car or rent a car right now. And the real value that you're bringing to this type of client or this demographic is again, that quick turnaround and the affordability. Maybe they're launching a new business and they need a website. They don't wanna spend the next 20, 30, 40 hours. They don't wanna spend the next two or three weeks trying to figure out a WordPress template or how to build it. Instead, they could just turn to you and have something spun up in a couple of days, fast turnaround, and it's a decent price. We'll talk more about pricing later, but this is the way that you're gonna approach marketing sales for this low ticket offering approach. Step number four, you need to have a good and streamlined client onboarding process. This streamlined client onboarding process needs to be there and it needs to be repeatable. It's not hands-on, it's not a lot of meetings, it's not a lot of back and forth. You don't have time or money for that. Instead, you're gonna create some sort of system that onboards clients quickly, answers their questions, and gets them the information. And again, this is acceptable because they're not paying such a massive price tag for the end result. Instead, we just need to get a couple of quick details, a couple of needs, and their preferences quickly and get that into the flow so we can start outputting or generating the website for them. Step number five is customization and deployment. Again, you're gonna customize the template based on the client's requirements and then you're gonna as fast as possible deploy the website, get it up to a staging server. This is why no-code tools are awesome, something like Wix Studio, because you can make those customizations, you can use AI to make sure that the responsive layouts are all good and you can immediately move it into a staging website domain and then load that thing up, send it to them within 48 to 72 hours and boom, you can get a little bit of feedback from them, make slight amounts of changes because you've probably used AI to help automate the process. You've probably filled out their copy using AI, AI generated images, and you just change things to match maybe their branding, uploaded their logo and bam, we are now on a staging site trying to get the few pieces of feedback we need to finish up and roll this thing out. Step number six is about maintenance updates and ongoing revenue packages. And you can format this in a lot of different ways. You might have sold the website for $2,000 and you just have a monthly maintenance and hosting package to give you a little bit of ongoing revenue. But I think if you're going for quantity, not quality, the best thing to do would be to sell this website for an initial jumpstart investment of maybe $500, $800, for the website with an ongoing monthly agreement of $250 to $500. This allows them to pay for the website month to month and put them on a payment plan. It only took you two days to build it, now they pay for it every single month. If you had a monthly package that leased the website to them, they didn't own it, you own it, and you give them an hour of update time and they paid you $500 a month for this and you did that 
10 times, you're gonna have $5,000 a month of income and revenue that you can depend on every single month. Again, structure this and package this any way you like. It might be less money up front for a higher ongoing price, or it might be a little bit more money up front for a cheaper ongoing price. But either way, the idea is to get them into a retainer, a subscription, a maintenance plan, or ongoing revenue. That's gonna help you in your business as you start to stack up this recurring revenue. Step number seven is to scale the business. You wanna systematize the process and start handling multiple clients and maybe, just maybe, even offloading the work that you do, even though it's not a whole lot of work, to somebody else and pay them to do it. Multiply yourself. Imagine if you could do five of these a month and you start to offload to multiple other people. Again, now you can do 10 of them a month, 15 of these a month, 20 of these a month. And you can start to really scale the business quickly and it's especially helpful if you can find a certain type of client within a niche or an industry. Maybe it's the service industry. We're talking about pool cleaners, electricians, plumbers, handymen, construction people. You find yourself in that area and then you just start referencing or you start getting referral clientele for all the people that are there. And so you wanna scale the business to try to handle as many clients as possible so that you have that ongoing monthly revenue. There is a lot of pros and cons to this approach. Let's talk about some of the positives or pros right now. Number one, it's scalability. It's easier to scale due to the templated nature of the work. You do it a couple of times, you build a couple of templates, you just tweak, change, and it's really about the templates, the process, and the scaling. So you can do this very, very quickly. You can start to spin up a business that starts to become sustainable within the first couple of months and it only goes up from there. Number two, that consistent revenue stream is such an awesome feeling. Instead of fighting this feast or famine, it's literally just about stacking more and more clients. Leasing websites, subscriptions, retainers, they are predictable, they are recurring, and that is very satisfying. And lastly, this is a faster turnaround. It's quicker to produce, meaning you can serve more clients and you can do a lot of these. So instead of spending two or three months on one client project, you only spend two to five days working with one client and then you just collect the income and revenue each month after that. It's a fantastic model for people who like to move quickly and do lots of projects. The cons or the negatives to this is that you have lower profit margin. Typically templated sites, they command a lower price and you do have to be ethical. You have to be honest about what you're doing. Don't lie to them and tell them it's going to take you hours and hours and hours. Say, I have a workflow and process that brings you a lot of value, but it is going to bring you lower profit margins. This is why it is the quantity approach. So keep that in mind. It's not going to be massive income for every client, but you start to stack up the five, 10, 15, or 20 clients and you have some really good recurring revenue. Con number two is the competition. There is more and more competition in the lower end market. When people are looking for the lower end website kind of prices, they're thinking about things like Fiverr, maybe buying a template of their own. The way that you can combat this competition of this low end market is by really selling the value that they'll get, which is professional design, customization, quick turnaround, low price, quality work. If that is your messaging, you're gonna do well. And again, the more and more that you do these, the more that your portfolio fills up and you start having more and more social proof. The best thing you could do with each one of these clients is to get some sort of testimonial. So all of a sudden your professional website has five, 10, 15, 30 testimonials of all these clients with these amazing websites. Future clients can picture themselves working with you and they like that cheap price and that turnaround time. The last negative that I would say is there's less client engagement. And some people really love client engagement. I know I do, but this means there's gonna be less interaction with the clients and it's gonna lead to fewer opportunities for upselling them or for long-term work. You really have a singular offering, cheap entry point to the website, ongoing subscription, retainer, or maintenance plan, and that is it. Keep all of those in mind, all the pros and cons, because they play a huge role in this approach. Well, that's it. Those are two different approaches to selling websites and structuring your web design business in 2024. What do you think? Which one of these approaches is right for you? Let me know down in the comments. Maybe you have a different way or a different way of thinking. I'd love to hear it and start that conversation. Check the description for some helpful links to some tools that might help you in this process. And if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a thumbs up 
subscribe to the channel and ring the bell so you know when more videos come out. And speaking of videos, check out this one here and this one here if you're looking for some more web design content. See you in the next one.